Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Man, I'm breaking down to bite sized pieces today. Fascinating stuff. First up, decentralized digital IDs can solve Amazon's fake reviews problem. And it actually goes much deeper than that and how it relates to a top 10 cryptocurrency right now. Also, Samsung doubles down on crypto with support for payments blockchain Stellar, and how I believe this is gonna to lead to mass adoption quicker than we think. And finally, blockchain is being used to help farmers and customers connect, and why at first glance it looks like a good story, but in the very end, it's actually a negative for cryptocurrency digital assets. And stick with me to the end, I'll be giving away one of these shield folios, which is made with stone, and it's gonna allow you to keep all your seed phrases and passwords uh, protected as it lasts a lifetime, tear resistant, oil and chemical resistant, water resistant as well. Not fire resistant, but pretty good. And it's gonna allow you to keep everything safe and secure. A lot of different method, methods such as the, the ghost pen, which hides all your writing and uh, keeps it safe or as safe as possible. So I'll be giving away one of those at the end, just stick with me. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So everything's down a little bit. Uh, Bitcoin, 0.6% down. Ethereum, Tether, not oh, Tether's Tether. XRP's XRP, 19 cents, 2.1, 2.9. Chainlink, uh, the darling of the top tens, is uh, sitting uh, pretty at 0.5% increase. And I gotta tell you, Chainlink has, uh, has rocketed up uh, over this last week. I mean, it's 31% right now, but um, I mean, I remember it was uh, three, four dollars not too long ago, and now here we are. So uh, if you're holding on to Chainlink, congratulations. Uh, Crypto.com down percentage. Tezos up four, which is great. Uh, Stellar is up, and we're gonna see why. Monero down. VeChain, which was up massively this week. I thought it would actually break into two cents, but it hasn't done that yet. But um, we will see. Uh, the week is not over yet. So. Anyhow, just hold strong. Looks like good things are happening. I mean, there had to be a pullback at some point, and uh, here we are. So let's break into today's top stories. So first up, payments tied to decentralized uh, digital IDs can solve Amazon's fake reviews problem. And we're really going to get into this one, but I think it's really going to uh, play into effect one of the top 10 cryptocurrencies. Now, the big story for me today was actually how Samsung is going to double down uh, for, for support for Stellar. But uh, this first story here plays into that part, so I want to go over this uh, first. But uh, before we start, this is written by Alistar Johnson, Crypto and Blockchain. And uh, we're going to get into who this guy is the very last, but uh, he's a reputable person. And uh, I actually enjoy reading some of his different articles, but uh, uh, we'll go over that very last and I'll show you why. So. This is all about product reviews and how they actually influence. So according to a report by the Spiegel Research Center, the likelihood of a customer opting for a product with just five reviews is 270% greater than the probability of purchasing a product with no reviews. For example, researchers found that reviews displayed for a lower priced product held a conversion rate increased by 190%. Whereas higher price products, it actually rose 380%. So what it really gets down to is if you have reviews, then the chances your product is going to actually sell uh, rapidly increases. I've got uh, many a product on Amazon through my Amazon store. And I can just tell you right now, reviews are king. Uh, the more, not the more reviews you have. I mean, if you have bad reviews, it doesn't really matter. But uh, four and five star reviews are like gold. And the more you have of those, usually the better off you are. And the more detailed someone leaves as far as like uh, the review itself, the description is even better. The problem that I've seen in my store personally is uh, fake reviews. And that's uh, against my competitors. They will just have, and it looks like the same person is writing it over and over again. So like, how can you trust it? I mean, you can't really trust these things, especially when you're going for a product. You're like, well, is this a good product or not product? Well, I'll just read what people say. But you don't know if it's a real person or a bot. And usually, and we're going to get into it, it's usually a bot. Anyhow, scrolling down. According to data from Statista, as of 2018, Amazon product categories, including supplements, electronics, and beauty share, 60% of fake product reviews worldwide. So if you've ever shopped on Amazon, and it's a pretty good chance you have because it's enormous, um, all those reviews that you you turn to and go, is this a good product? Do people actually like this? Is this actually going to you know hold up and is, is what it says it is? 60% of the time, they are fake reviews. So it's just people buying reviews, people using bots. It's just, it's just an awful system because you never really can tell what you're going to get. And I've fallen victim to this. I get a product. I think it's awesome. I uh, you know break open the package and I'm like, wow, this thing sucks. And it's all because of these you know fake reviews. And I think it's a huge problem. Anyhow, 
The problem has become so widespread that Amazon has spent $400 million to date fighting back against fake reviews. The platform has even opted to take legal action after it uncovered a black market selling four and five star reviews. It states these bots slip through Amazon's verification standard and can be employed to either boost positive reviews or be used to target a rival with negative ones, which is what has happened to one of my listings. Unfortunately, not even Amazon can tackle the issue completely as much of it takes place outside the platform. I think that's the, that's the key word here. So when I was reading this the first time, I thought to myself, well, is this what's happening with YouTube and their scammers? Because I mean, something like this last week to two weeks, it's been nothing but scams. I get four or five scams in my feed uh, like every single day, uh, if not every single hour. And I've had a lot of different subscribers say, hey, I saw a scam video right before your video. I saw it in the middle of your video and I saw one after your video. And that was me talking about scam of the day. So I just can't believe, I mean, as we, as they say, que huevos, that they actually, these people are actually doing this and putting them right. I mean, how, ball, how ballsy can you get really is what it comes down to. So, I mean, for YouTube, I look at them like, well, maybe that's the same thing that's happening. I mean, Amazon is a multi-billion dollar company, if not a trillion dollar company uh, on the heels of it. I think it actually is now. So if a company like that can't stop negative reviews or scam reviews, I mean, what's what chance does YouTube have? So maybe they're dealing with the same issues. These things are just slipping through the cracks. However, this last sentence here where it says as much of it takes place outside the platform, uh, that's not the case with, with YouTube. I mean, people submit um, their videos for marketing to be considered as an ad and then it is approved by uh, YouTube. Usually it's an, it's an automated process, but I mean, come on. If, if YouTube and Google can't figure out an algorithm to figure out what is a scam uh, for some of these videos, and I know that you know there's like tens of thousands of hours uh, uploaded every single minute, but I mean, if they have the ability to uh, strike one, a couple of my videos down and I upload just one a day and the, along with everybody else, why can't they do it with the scams? That's just all I'm saying. But on top of that, I mean, we've, we've, we just saw a huge amount of scams take place in the Twitterverse, uh, if you don't realize, Today it is July 16th, and recently there was a huge um, hack that occurred uh, in the Twitterverse where all these huge, I mean huge Twitter accounts got hacked. Everything from Binance, CZ Binance, Gemini, and look at all these these uh, blue check marks. Coinbase, uh, Coindesk, Justin Sun, Tron, Charlie Lee, Bitfinex, and these are just the um, cryptocurrency folks, right? Uh, look at, here's Elon Musk, the, the Elon Musk, uh, Bill Gates, Uber, uh, Joe Biden, <laughs> Joe Biden, Barack Obama, uh, Makeout Hill, I don't know who that is, uh, Kim Kardashian West, Floyd, <laughs> man, Floyd, my other, and Wiz Khalifa. I mean, these are huge, huge accounts, and they got, you know, hacked in a blink of an eye, and it all happened, uh, like, all together. It was a coordinated attack. And this is from uh, Larry Cermak at Law Mastery. He put this all together, so great job to him. <clears throat> But I mean, what's happening here is that they all said, "Hey, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give back. Uh, send us some Bitcoin, and we'll send you more, more back." Which is an asymmetrical giveaway, which is what we talk about all the time in this channel. And uh, what Larry says here is that it started at 2:16 p.m., and then at 4:17 p.m., it was clear to everyone, and it took Twitter two hours uh, to 6:05 Eastern time to start acting. So two hours. I mean, these were just going live to, I mean, millions upon millions of people. And what was amazing to me is that, as I can tell, only $100,000 or so was actually siphoned away from people. So I think that's impressive that uh, all these people that were involved, I mean, all the different accounts that were hacked, only 100000 got taken. So that leads me to two things. First of all, uh, either people are extremely savvy in how they are actually looking at scams and, and look at this and go, that's stupid, I would never do that. Uh, that's the first part. And the second thing is, there may be a more sinister motive behind what actually happened. I mean, people can go in there and they can scam all day long, right? But what if there's something else behind this that actually happened? I mean, it could be anything. It could be anything from, from data mining to putting additional malware in the system to any kind of spyware. I mean, look, they hacked into Twitter's account like it was nothing. So, and it was, a, it was across a wide swath of different people. So if I'm looking at this 
from an objective perspective and going, well, what really was the uh, the motive here? I don't think it was just to you know, easily get you know just a little bit of money here. I think there was something more behind it, and we won't know. We won't know for for days, weeks, months, and uh, that's that's the scary part. So I think when we look at social media and we think, oh, it's pretty safe. It's just social media. Maybe it's time to really switch to a decentralized platform that can be a little bit more secure because obviously. With what happens in Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and all the other ones out there, it's uh, it's a pretty big mess, and uh, we're only opening ourselves up to uh, incredible problems moving forward. Anyhow, just my thoughts. So moving on, on eBay and even social media platforms such as Facebook, the black market for fake reviews has been thriving. The watchdog uncovered a total of 26 Facebook groups in which individuals offered to write fake reviews in exchange for compensation. In response, both Facebook and eBay removed the content but measures the curb instances in the future. And I will just tell you from experience, I get emails from these different groups that say, hey, we know that you're a Amazon seller, and if you pay us X amount, we'll give you all these hundreds of reviews for your products. And I just can't do that because that goes against, first of all, it goes against the terms and services of Amazon. And if you're, and first of all, it's wrong. Second of all, if you get caught for it, you get banned for life. So why would you do it? Well, some people do it and uh, it seems to work out for them. And that's why I'm, you know, really was excited about this article because I think it really should happen. They really should clamp down on this. But moving on to states, while likely well-intentioned by taking bad actors on one at a time, not only are these firms fighting a losing battle, but they're wasting valuable resources doing so. Instead, they need to focus on the root of the problem by ensuring reviews cannot be written by anyone other than the genuine customer. So this leads us back to the scam of the day because what happens with us is that I go and I, and actually subscribers will actually send me uh, different scams that are going on. I'll report them uh, in one of the videos and then people will go attack that scam and take, get it taken down. And it's a slow process because we have to do it one by one and there's thousands out there. But we, we can only, you can only do what you can, when you can, with what you got. And that's our one thing that we do. So that since we attack these scams, and I teach everybody about this is what you have to look out for, asymmetrical giveaways, take a look at the uh, reviews or the, the comments below and see what it all comes down to. The hope is that just because that one gets taken down, that's not the big thing. The big thing is educating people as they come into the space. Now remember, you watching this video, you may be super savvy and know exactly what to look out for, but you have to understand there's new people coming in every day. They don't know squat, they don't know anything and they need help uh, bigly. So when we do these types of things, I think it helps out everybody. And here's a prime example. This is from Droplet, and this was three days ago. He says, uh, hey, Dan, you're a giant. It's been almost a full year since I bought my first Bitcoin. I saw those scams, and for a few seconds I wondered, what the heck, this new thing is so strange. Is it possible to double my Bitcoin? Then I saw your and some other videos that make it clear just what slimy people are out there. So you were saving a lot of people a lot of money. I know because I'm one of them. And that's exactly why we talk about it. And I know some people will put in the comments like, why do you do that scam of the day? It's so boring. That's the boring part. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? It's because you have to understand. If you see it, that's okay. But it has to be for everybody. There should be no investor left behind type of program. And if I don't do it, I mean, who's going to do it? Let's be honest. It's not like YouTube's out there fighting these types of things. It's up to me and you to really do this. And if we don't do it, we all have people behind and then uh, one person tells 10, 10 tells 1,000. And then the whole space becomes a scam factory. And that's no good. So that's why we do it. So moving on. Fake reviews can be circumvented via verified digital ID underpinned by the immutability and security of blockchain. Combining a biometrically authenticated ID with a payment source creates an indisputable way of authenticating reviews. Picture this, you log into Amazon with your biometrically verified digital identity. So I'm guessing like your thumb or your finger and you put it on your iPhone and then boom, you're in. Then you purchase this, that whatever product you have. A day after purchasing with your funded decentralized identity, the courier delivers your package pinging your digital ID to enable contactless delivery, satisfies you leave an honest review, linked to your payment verified digital identity. So finishing up, as long as the payment source used to buy the product under review is connected to the verified ID, consumers and companies alike can rest assured that the review is authentic and impossible to fabricate. And guess who is doing blockchain IDs? And when I read that, when I read about the, that this company was doing blockchain IDs, I was like, that's huge. 
and no one really no one really thought about it just to kind of glance over it but this is the, i think this is a big thing when i read this this was about cardano when they did the virtual summit this was just uh 10 13 days ago or so iohk also revealed they'll be launching a decentralized identity system and when i saw it i'm like that's brilliant because that's what we need because if we can have something like that i mean what else could we do with the id system well we just see if we can do reviews we can do voting maybe we can get into the healthcare industry all these different things that we need for ids instead of loving it around a uh, a fake i mean a fake id an id and we, we show it to everybody else but if you have a decentralized id you are set in stone and anywhere you go you can work itself out even the unbanked the people that don't have ids the people that are in third world countries so I think this is bigger than what it is. I think it's going to be a monstrous thing moving forward, but that's just my opinion. So anyhow, so who wrote this article? Who was this masked man, Alistar Johnson? So Alistar is an entrepreneur and innovator, believes that blockchain is about to transform relationships between individuals and institutions they interact with. This, I thought this was brilliant. He says he envisions a world in which individuals regain absolute power over their own data and profit from its value every day. Listen, uh, every other place, every social media platform has been using you to use your data, your information, and sell it to all these different co these companies and corporations across the globe. And you didn't see a penny of it. All you got was some kind of goofy little uh, GIF or GIF image that you could share, or maybe a video here or there, or maybe some kind of Facebook post. That's all you got. You got some free kind of service. Congratulations. But you know who made a lot of money? All the different places out there and blockchain i think is the same thing especially with a decentralized id and especially if you're using like the brave browser but i'm not going to get into the weeds anyhow alistar had led global integrated product development and product market for brands like microsoft skype office xbox hololens hololens sure disney ted and the bbc and then he is founder and ceo of nuggets.life a blockchain e-commerce payments and id platform that's redefining online security and privacy. So it was a great article, uh, but it was kind of, you know, Alistair's got uh, one foot in the door with, uh, <laughs> with blockchain ID. So I get why he wrote it, but I thought it was a beautiful article. Well, well done. All right, let's move on. Next up, Samsung doubles down with blockchain Stellar. So what's going on? So today, just today, uh, they announced the Stellar Foundation, integration of Stellar into the Samsung blockchain key store. The integration will allow Samsung devices users to be able to securely store, this is interesting, their private keys associated with their Stellar blockchain wallet. This solves what has traditionally been a challenging part of the blockchain user experience, which is the ability to manage private keys in a secure manner. Typically, the more secure the solution, the more challenging the experience is for the user. And I got to tell you, if you have, even with a Nano, if you're, I mean, you don't have to really secure anything like that, but just to use that is kind of cumbersome. So I always say, if mass adoption is going to happen, it's going to happen when my mom can use it because that's really the most lagging person I can think of. Uh, the internet, browsers, it all worked out great when you didn't see all the code and all the stuff that, that went on behind the scenes. No one wants to know how you make the sausage. They just want the sausage. So the same thing goes with cryptocurrency digital assets. They have to hide that stuff and make it super simple because people are lazy and they don't want to work too hard for it. And I get that because there's a lot of things going on. Maybe you got like 12 kids running around or whatever it is. And you got five jobs. If you have so much to do, this is just one more thing to worry about. So make it simple. Moving on, it says the ability to manage private keys in both a secure and user-friendly way is a key hurdle that the blockchain community must clear if it is able to expand its appeal to a broader set of mass market users from the technologically inclined early adopters, i.e. me and you, and hobbyists that predominantly use the technology today. States while software wallets that store private keys on behalf of users on computers and devices have been available for some time, they have often suffered from security vulnerabilities as they share the phone, tablet, or computer with other apps. That's why we call them hot wallets. A more secure approach is to use hardware level segregation where a separate computer processor that can only be accessible by authorized software is used to protect keys from prying eyes. So I think it's interesting. What they did is, and they said it right here, they created a secure processor dedicated to protecting the pin, password pattern, and blockchain private key. Just one processor, just for that alone. And that's, it's dedicated for only that purpose. Um, 
So they do that and then combine with the Knox platform, security is infused into every part of your phone from hardware to software, so private data stays private. I think it's interesting to see if it, you know, how unhackable it actually is. I don't have a Samsung phone, I have an iPhone, but if it ever comes to iPhone, I'll definitely upgrade just so I can store, you know, my private keys in that shape uh, or form. I think it's interesting and I think it makes things a heck of a lot easier for than what we have right now, which is writing everything down. And uh, Ed, good luck <laughs> if if that paper gets uh, gets wet or gets ripped apart or something like that. And that's why uh, we're going to talk about uh, this Shield Folio, which is made from stone, which is pretty cool. Yeah. The wallet and key store is only available on a handful of devices. Galaxy S20, Galaxy Z Flip, Galaxy Note 10, the Fold, and the S10 series. And the last thoughts on this is I think this is huge, and especially as they roll them all out into more and more phones. But right now, people, I mean, there's a ton of Samsung phones out there. And uh, I think right now, not so big of a deal. But as these phones start to fail and people start to upgrade, because that's what the um, phone industry does, or the um, providers, Verizon, AT&T, or whatever you guys have in Europe and Australia and India, or whatever it is, um, these phones, they want you to upgrade. They want you to pay. And I think they're going to push these types of phone out there. And I think that's what's going to lead to mass adoption when we can make things just a lot more sim simpler. And on top of all, all the simplicity, if you compare, uh, do all that, the simplicity of having your private keys, plus you pair it with the decentralized ID of what we just talked about in the last story where they talked about the um, biometrically verified identifications, which you can definitely do on a lot of phones these days. If you combine those two together, I think it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner, and it works out pretty well for everybody, and then we go to mass adoption. Anyhow, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Let's move on to the last story. Last one, this is pretty quick. Uh, big coffee sellers use blockchain to connect farmers and customers. So when I first saw that, I'm like, great. And then this, then this paragraph, I'm like, this sucks. It says, Farmer Connect announced today it would partner with Smuckers, Folgers brand coffee, great, to use the IBM blockchain platform connecting producers to customers. Not great. A QR code will allow consumers who buy uh, 1850 coffee, I guess, to see how it was grown and brought to the shelf. Well, that's pretty cool. Folgers will be the first large U.S. food brand to use this service. Farmer Connect's website will provide where the coffee was grown, processed, and exported. Consumers can understand the drink in their hands as part of clean water and small farm agriculture initiatives and blah, blah, blah. Great. Okay, so here's the problem. Obviously, you can see the problem. The problem is that we have big corporations coming in and they're offering uh, blockchain as a service. And in this case, the supply chain that's uh, being used, IBM, uh, for tracking you know, all these different things, it is directly cutting into uh, a service or a digital asset or a cryptocurrency, or you want to call it, such as VeChain and the other ones out there that do the same thing. I think VeChain is, is, is far ahead of everyone uh, for right now. I know in the comment section, someone's going to say, yeah, but you have, have you seen FanCoin? Oh, FanCoin, it, it does so much. It's so awesome. And uh, sure, I mean, maybe it is. But uh, VeChain right now is uh, you know doing a lot of great things. So we will see. But uh, when I see these types of stories about, I mean, these huge conglomerates, these huge corporations using um, you know IBM, I'm like, Pfft. Uh, that's not that's not what I got into the space for. I'm not here to buy stock into IBM so they can start to run all these things on a permissioned, centralized type of blockchain. It's the same kind of crap we got now. I don't need you. And I will say that we went over this in pretty great detail about the different IBM, uh, different types of blockchain products that they have. They have everything from currency to smart contracts to oracles. I mean, everything that you can think of that like an Ethereum or a Chainlink or a Bitcoin or an XRP or whatever else, they kind of have copied all that and they've done it all. And I talk about, you know, how they're actually getting into it, but I talk about their shortcomings and why they're going to fail. So I'll link this to the very end. And that's what I think about as far as, you know, what's going to actually happen with Hyperledger Fabric and IBM and all the rest of the nonsense that they've got going on. So anyhow, that is it. So I want to say thanks for sticking with me through uh, all the different rants and whatnot we were talking about. Uh, try to try to shorten this video up as best I can. 
But uh, to get this fantastic little notebook, which uh, I actually have myself, and I used it, I used that that ghost pen, which was pretty cool, where you could just write uh, like invisible uh, for my my Theta wallet, and it worked out pretty well. But you just you know shine a little light in there, and then there it is. I did take a look at it, and uh, someone asked me, well, is it is it uh, fireproof? It's not fireproof because I lit a piece of paper on fire and, and it burned. But uh, I will say this. This part right here where it says tear resistant, oil and chemical resistant, I can verify that. Because I was rubbing, I, and then water, of course, I was rubbing my hand over it after I wrote it and it wouldn't scratch or, you know, peel off or anything, which I always think is going to be the big thing over time. So what I'm going to do is just to give one of these, these guys away is in the comments, uh, just say, I want a uh, shield folio and uh, I'll just pick it at random and then I'll contact you. We can just do it, do it via email. And then uh, I'll just pick somebody random. You send me your, your address. I'll send it to Shield Folio because they are trying to uh, get the acceptance or, or people to know about it. And I'll ship it out that way. And that, that'll do it. So uh, just do that. And that's fantastic. If you got a couple minutes, stick with me and we'll talk about Scam of the Day. I know it's not very exciting, but let me tell you, like we talked about in the other uh, story, it's huge and it's important. So if you don't know, uh, I started Scam of the Day in around January because I was sick of people getting screwed out of their money. And we just saw that happen many a time. And um, what I to do this is in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link. It's going to look like this. And when you click on that, it's going to take us uh, to the Scam of the Day. And just scroll all the way down. And uh, what we're looking for is just go to the last one because this one is really annoying. Uh, this one was just found on July 13th. And what we're going to do is just going to click on that link and it's going to take us to this melon head. So what we're looking for is, first of all, never take my word for it that it is a scam. I mean, I could just be a hater of Jonathan Williams if that's his real name, which I doubt it is. Um, what you want to do is first look at the comments. And uh, of course, there I am. Please remove this. Uh, and some people, maybe maybe Julia Croco. <laughs> Croco something. Maybe uh, maybe she's tr maybe it's true, but there's other things where people say like uh, you know, Jalay, have you been reported? I kind of the FBI. It's funny. She never have payments. You don't even know how to lie. So maybe some of them are just haters. Maybe Digital Asset News is just a hater. Maybe he just hates Jonathan Williams. Well, what we're always going to look for is what is an asymmetrical giveaway. So if we watch the whole video, this guy is going to say here. He's going to want. He's going to say. If you send me, just send from 1,000 to 10,000 XRP, and you're going to get 10,000 to 100,000 back. That's an asymmetrical giveaway, meaning that if you give somebody uh, a little bit and they give you a lot back, uh, that never happens. You are not special. No one likes you that much to give you that much money. Uh, may maybe your mom. I don't know. But uh, in general, it's a scam. So just play it safe and always consider everything you see as a scam. And if you want to verify it, first reach out to Ripple and say, hey, there's a guy named Jonathan Williams and he's got a big head and he's doing a giveaway. So is that true? Is that what's going on? They'll tell you no. If you go to like, you know, Binance and, and you get some kind of like, hey, there's a giveaway going on. Is that no? Microsoft? No. I mean, Elon Musk, uh, Tesla? No. They're all going to tell you no. But if you if you have to go and do it, go do it. Just make sure, you're, you know, that you have the time because it's going to take about 24 hours and just send an email to the actual website and they'll tell you it is a scam anyhow now we got past that little speed bump let's just click on the three dots here click on report and we're going to put on spammer misleading i'm going to choose one and we're going to say it's scammer fraud and it doesn't apply to links it applies to the video and we're going to say hey this is a scam and you can put whatever you want and just click report and then off it goes. So the more people that do this, the better off we are. But uh, that's it. So if you could help me out, I'd greatly appreciate it. And then that could help, you know, somebody just, just like Droplet here who almost uh, got screwed out of his money. But if it wasn't for people like you and me helping out, he would have lost a lot of his hard-earned money. So that's all I ask. So that's it for today. Thanks for sticking with me. See you in the next one.